What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're gonna to be breaking down how you guys can make faster cuts at the top of the route, or at the top of a break. So we're gonna be taking a look at this route here from Calvin Ridley, we're gonna be looking at a route here from Elijah Moore, and then we're gonna be talking about just how a rocker step can be used against man coverage. So I hope this video gives you guys some values, just how you can be more efficient top of the break, eliminate time, and get out of breaks, obviously a little bit faster. But also, fellas, if you guys also wanna improve your explosiveness, speed, um, power production, being able to be more flexible at the top of the break, actually drop your hips, check out that very first link in the description for a two month long wide receiver gym bundle program. So it's two months. It's not our regular one month program. We have our original one month program and then a 2.0 program that's a little bit more advanced. The exercises get harder, workout splits get harder, so you'll see results faster. So check out that very first link in the description, fellas. Two month wide receiver gym bundle. Let's get started with this video. So we're looking at this rider from Calvin Ridley. Great job working this kind of like, I would say it's more like, not, not necessarily a diamond release. It's more of like an under route where he's just pushing vertical for about five yards than just going to slip this thing back underneath, right? So now we're focusing on the top of the route. So what you can do at the top of the route to get as much separation as possible is not have any indicators with your break and also being able to be sudden with your breaks, okay? So what I mean by that is when Ridley's going up into this thing, you see how he's not necessarily looking, he's not looking here, not having his eyes straight up in the air. He's, he's pressing forward, right? His eyes are straight forward. He's in a good 45 degree angle pad level. That is, that's pure speed right here, right? And that's commit, that's commitment with his shoulders and with his hips that's what gets a DB to turn his hips, right? Because immediately, especially when you're on the, on the goal line, like 10 going in, you're in the red zone, um, tw even 20 going in, like you're a little bit backed up, you're always going to be a vertical threat because no DB wants to get mossed in the back corner. No DB wants to just get beat in a foot race to the back corner where the quarterback just puts it up. So we're automatically a vertical threat. So that's how we have to act. And how I do that is eyes forward, shoulders and hips forward, and actually running. A lot of people, a lot of coaches will be like, oh, I just got to sell the fade more. It's like, what does that actually mean? That means actually having my eyes there, commit my shoulders, commit my hips, and being in stride. So now when you make that break at the top, to make it more, to make it fast and to make it explosive, you got to be able to do it in stride. But when you're in stride, if you don't get low enough and you don't get an explosive position enough, you're not going to be able to get out of the break efficiently and not going to be able to create explosions. So you see how Ridley, he's actually running in full stride and he snaps, right? And you see how low he's able to get. He's bringing his chin to his knee. He's dropping with his hips. I don't necessarily, I'm not a huge fan of this drag, but the drag wasn't necessarily to slow down. It was more like he was just in stride and he ended up dragging. When you reach out, when you when you snap down and it's not sudden and you reach and you start to lean back and your chest pops up in the air and then you drag with the back foot, that's when I got a problem because you're not creating any explosion. So you see when he snaps, he gets to that low explosive position. Now, a lot of people will see this and what they'll do is they'll just bend at their waist. They'll get into a break and they'll just bend, right? What you still got to do is you got to be able to drop your hips first and you see how he's still dropping his hips. It's almost like a lunge and then you can worry about dropping your pad level, but you got to drop drop with your hips first. That hip drop is what gets you nice and tight. Like you pretend like almost there's a cone right here. That's what gets you around this cone fast. And that's what get that could, so it creates explosion. Cause this is almost like, again, we talk about it a lot. It's like a 40 yard dash, right? Those first 10 yards, you're trying to create explosion. So the next 30, you can hit that top speed and go run. Same idea. That's what we're thinking about right here. So I'm cause I want to create that explosion. So when I get to that acceleration phase of the route, I can actually run out of this thing. Okay. So focus on getting low and putting in yourself in this explosive position. Now to get out of it, faster when it comes to steps, you got to make sure that that second step right here gets your hips turned. So you see how when he snaps that second step that he makes, he almost pivots it completely on the break. If he were running a 45 break, we would want to pivot just a little bit more. So your third step can actually hook around to where it needs to be. And we could push off of that third step to create some energy and create some explosion. Cause that third step push right there is like the icing on the cake. So you snap, you get in a low explosive position with that first trigger step. You pivot with the second step, hook around with the third step and push. Now, again, if you're kind of a beginner to this type of stuff, I wouldn't recommend worrying about steps. What I would recommend you doing is worrying about dropping your hips and selling vertical. The steps will come. The steps will automatically start to eliminate themselves as you get a little bit more crisper with the break, a little bit more powerful with your steps and a little more violent with your hips. So that's a perfect example of how you guys can get out of a break, least amount of steps possible, least amount of time possible, and actually have that explosion to turn it into acceleration. Because again, DB is not in the worst position of all time, but it's still, when you're in tight like this, when you're you're in, on the 10-yard line going in, this is wide-ass open from a quarterback perspective too. Dude, I'm, I'm thankful that he's this open because you don't normally get this when you're in tight like this. So this is a perfect route by Ridley. Let's watch this thing again, full speed. That's a great example of actually pushing vertical and, um, and actually dropping his hips. So you see how Ridley comes here, pushes up, drops those hips, being violent, and then make sure we accelerate out of this break. So now we're looking at this rider from Elijah Moore. Kind of the same thing in this situation, right? So now, main thing I want to talk about is that 
This is more of like a diamond release slant, right? So when you guys are trying to get a DB to turn his hips and when you have like, when it's tight, when you're in tight, right? He's not off man, you're off the ball, but he's not even giving you necessarily even a yard of space right here. You gotta make sure that you push vertical. You're physical with those hands, but also to make that explosive break, hips and shoulders gotta commit to this thing, okay? So it's like that, it's like some, someone told me like maybe two weeks ago, like they, it was one of the guys that I work with and he's like, yeah, it's more like a mind-body connection type deal when it comes to changing direction. Like your body knows what to to do. It's just like your mind has to be thinking about, okay, let's commit to the break. And then my body will naturally react, right? Obviously, if you're, if you're new to this and it's new, newer stuff that you're learning and you're not, you're not comfortable working on breaks like this, it's going to take a little bit more. It's going to take you working certain drills to work on your cuts, getting a little bit more comfortable, but trust me over time it builds. So you see when he comes off of here and he pushes vertical, right? His hips and shoulders are fully committed to this diamond portion of this slam, right? That's what's going to get this dude to turn, but that's what forces you to make that explosive change change of direction because what a lot of guys will do is they'll have that shoulder and their hip turned to the inside, right? So they'll, they'll have their shoulder hip turned to the inside. They'll be looking this way and then, but they're, they're like going to drift back inside or they're not even fully committed. They don't have any speed because their shoulders and their hips are already turned. That's what's going to get this DB to sit down because this actually looks like a fade. What you would do if your shoulder and your hip were turned to the inside, that don't look like a fade. That's not going to get a DB to commit his hips. That's not going to get him to turn and run. And then obviously we have that same explosive break like we were talking about, low explosive the position, dropping his hips first, then he's focused on dropping his chin to his knee. You see how he pivots with that second step. Third step kind of just shoots around and he really can push off of it. I think that third step could have a little bit more power and he could really push off that third step, but same kind of concept. Get him to commit his hips, commit, get him, him to get the DB to commit his hips by you committing your hips and your shoulders and actually having speed to the break to force him off that platform, okay? Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. There's a great route by Elijah Moore, obviously one of the better route runners coming out of the draft this year. Great job accelerating off the break as well. So now we're going to be looking at this rocker step, okay? So this is Thayer Thomas, um, and so we're, we're going to be looking at just what he does at the top of the break that can move this DB, that can really, um, but it can also get you out of the break fast, because that's what we're focused on today. So you see when he comes off of here, gets the outside release, hits him with a one-two rocker step, and then is able to accelerate out. So now the main thing I can tell you about a rocker step is that when you're here and you're making this one-two cut, when you go one Two, you want to make sure that you throw, right? I know we don't have the best look at like his lower half right here, but I want you to see how much his upper half goes towards the inside. Because again, when you're making a rocker step, you want to step in the direction that you're going first, but that step doesn't necessarily have to be the biggest, like longest one, two. It's more like got to be sudden and got to have some explosion. So when he decides to make this cut, you see how it's like it's not way outside of his frame. It's a sudden cut, but you see how much his body goes towards the inside, right? Because the whole goal ultimately, because this DB is supposed to be watching your hips is actually moving my whole entire upper half to the inside. If I could really push with that first cut, that first cut can be sudden and I push off of that cut and I really throw my upper half to the inside. Look what that can do to that DB. And you see when he lands, you could almost tell, I know it's a little blurry, but he's got that like almost 45 degree shin angle because that weight is on the inside part of his foot. No matter when you're cutting, whether it's just a single hard indicator cut, whether it's a one, two, whether it's a rocker step like that, that violent just break with your feet, that violent just sudden pop of that one, two, that's what gets you the most separation possible. That's what gets you that explosion. And then that explosion, you could really push off of that cut and generate some speed and acceleration off of this cut to focus on widening the gap at the DB. Cause trust me, this is a ton of separation at this level. That's a great route by Thomas. Watch the thing again, full speed. Great job using that rocker step. Top of the break, be sudden with the first cut, push off of that inside arch to throw into the second cut. So you get a more explosion and more speed out of the break. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also, fellas, two-month-long wide receiver gym training program, specific exercises for your wide receivers to improve, right? It's not just exercise you can get anywhere else. It's specific exercise with reasons behind it as to how this improves your game on the field, how you can translate this onto the field, and the specific things that wide receivers need to build on. So again, very first link in the description. Hope we can get you guys on that soon. I'll see you guys next time.